Tuesday night college hoops from the Stroh Center. Tonight, the Bowling Green Falcons take on the Purple Aces of Evansville. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us alongside Andrew Everhart. I'm Brad Wozniki. This will be just the fifth meeting all time between these two teams, and if you like three-point shooting, this is the place to be. Bowling Green comes in, leading the MAC in three-point shooting percentage at better than 40%, while Evansville, also better than 40%, third in the nation right now. Yeah, both of these teams are shooting hot from three this season, especially Bowling Green. In their last game against Norfolk, they were 14 to 25 from range. So if Evansville is going to have any type of chance in this game, they're going to have to stop their perimeter shooting. And this will be the third straight game for the Purple Aces without their leading scorer, Ryan Taylor. It's definitely going to take an entire team effort tonight for Evansville, coming in averaging 69 points a game. And we're going to focus on a guy like Drew Smith, the starting point guard for this Evansville team, averaging better than 10 points a game. He also distributes the basketball better than five assists a game. Yeah, and Drew Smith is doing an exceptionally well uh, in the absence of Ryan Taylor, the leading scorer on the team. He's a great overall player. Like you mentioned, he's getting it done on offense and defense, and he's got 12 steals on the season. So he's a player that Bowling Green's going to have to watch out for. And then you look at the Bowling Green Falcons coming in with a record of 7-2, and two, coming off another good road victory, thanks in large part to that man, Dylan Fry, the team's leading scorer, averaging better than 16 points a game. He's also getting it done on the glass at better than four rebounds a game. Yeah, and Dylan Fry is just also having an exceptionally well uh, season for the Falcons. In his last game against Norfolk, he had a career-high 28 points on 9 of 13 shooting and 5 of 7 from range. When he gets behind that three-point line, he is deadly. For more on Bowling Green's sophomore guard, here's Caden Albanese. Dylan, you've been shooting 46% from three this season. What's been the key to your high hand? Uh, it's my teammates finding me in the open spots, you know, uh, running down, transition, getting in open spots. They hit me right in my, in my pocket, and I just knock down the threes. As a team, you guys have scored at least 80 points the past three games. What's been working for you guys on offense? Well, first it, stops on the, it starts on the defensive side. We're getting stops, and then we get out in transition, and that's our game. Pushing the ball ahead, sharing the ball. Everybody can score, and we, we, can, we score the ball good. Well, on defense, as a team, you guys have allowed 47% shooting from opponents. What do you got to do to limit Evansville tonight? What do you got to take away from them? Uh, take away the curls. They, they run a motion offense, so we got to stop all the curls and just talk on defense. That's, that's the biggest part. Thanks, Dylan. All right, when we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the tip-off. It's Star Wars night here on ESPN. Welcome back inside the Stroh Center here in Bowling Green, Ohio. The Bowling Green Falcons getting ready to take on the Purple Aces of Evansville. Evansville coming in a 6-2 record so far this season. Bowling Green at 7-2. And, and let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Purple Aces. It'll start with the man we talked about, point guard Drew Smith coming in at 6'3". Then you have Dwayne Gibson, the redshirt senior. One of the redshirt seniors in the starting five for Evansville. Another three-point shooter there and Noah Frederking, followed by Blake Simmons and then Danius Hatkemakis, the junior from Lithuania. Now for the Bowling Green Falcons. Starts with Rod Caldwell, the five foot ten sophomore, followed up by the leading scorer, Dylan Fry. Then you have Justin Turner, the redshirt freshman at six foot four. Another freshman there in Derek Koch. He has been strong since he started his career here at Bowling Green, especially on the glass. And then you have DiMaggio Wiggins, the team's leading rebounder at six foot ten. Bowling Green and Evansville have each won two games in this all-time series. The last meeting was last season, December 6th, 2016. Evansville won 69-66. You look at Evansville head coach Marty Simmons coaching at his alma mater. His 11th season as the head coach of the program, a record of 173 and 162. It's always fun as well as a head coach when you get to coach your son out there. Yeah, that's, all, that's always a plus. 
And the thing for Marty Simmons is that he's also a former player. He's in the Evansville Athletics Hall of Fame. And his son, Blake Simmons, wears the same number as his dad. As the Purple Aces win the tip. DiMaggio Wiggins led the way for Bowling Green in this meeting last year with 18 points and 12 boards. Zach Denny and Rod Caldwell were the other two players in double figures. For Evansville, they were led by Jalen Brown, now gone after graduation. Brown finished with 29 points. He was 14 of 15 from the charity strike, and he was the only player in double figures. Shot no good, the tip and the follow-up. That's Hat Kevakis. Comes in 5.6 points per game and better than five rebounds a game. Yeah, Hat Kevakis, he's the leading rebounder for this Evansville team. And for Bowling Green, you've got to find a way to get those offensive rebounds. And Coke trying to go behind the back. Didn't quite have control. Evansville basketball. Speaking of rebounds, Derek Coke leading rebounder in high school basketball history in the state of Ohio. He's been really big for them on the boards this season. Another note you look at from last year's meeting between these two teams is Evansville came out and shot 53% from the field in the first half. They didn't shoot a ton of threes in that game. They were just two of six. Bowling Green was seven of 18 as Turner, good defense there. Now Turner guarded by Smith. Finds Wiggins, who lost it, able to gather and finish. Good awareness by Wiggins. Even though he lost that ball, he got right back to it and put it in for the easy layup. Wiggins has also done exceptionally well for the Falcons this season, averaging 15 points per game. He's really stepped up. And he's one of the more experienced players out there. This is, with tonight's game, his 49th consecutive start. Really good reliability and it's good that he's out there because Bowling Green, not a whole lot of leadership in terms of the, the class because Matt Fox is the only senior on this team. Bowling Green coming in to this season as one of the youngest teams in the country behind Kentucky and American. Falcons defeated Norfolk State 92-77 just prior to this game. My partner mentioned Bowling Green hit 14 threes in that one. Falcons were also 18 of 21 from the free throw line. And it's inside, no good for Coke. And a loose ball. It's going back the other way. Coke usually good at getting those rebounds. He, he gave it all he could right there, but unfortunately couldn't get it. Looking at Bowling Green head coach Michael Huger, former Bowling Green Falcon basketball player as well. Played professionally in Europe from 93 to 2005. He was selected as the Dutch League MVP in 1996 after better than 25 points a game and over five assists a game. Impressive resume for Coach Michael Huger, and even more importantly, he's got his Bowling Green team off to a really good start to the season at 7-2. and two. Better start than last season for sure. And out of bounds. Going to say last touched by Bowling Green. After the three-pointer by Blake Simmons. The Purple Aces are in front. Blake Simmons coming in, shooting 48% from long range. Also averaging 3.3 rebounds per game. And he's one of the leaders on this team that's had to step up in Ryan Taylor's absence. Like you mentioned before, they should get him back in a couple more weeks. Had a, had a fracture in his foot against, I believe it was Louisiana Tech. He said it felt good. He played on it and got an x-ray. And unfortunately, there was a small fracture. So he'll be out for a little bit more time. But they've been doing pretty well without him so far. You just can't say enough about just how tough that is for a team when you lose your top scorer to graduation, and then the guy that's expected to step in and be the leading scorer is gone in the early part of the year. As Dylan Fry is fouled. And pardon me, this will be a foul away from the basketball. And we're going to have an early substitution as checking in for the Purple Aces. That is Dalen Traore. 
the six foot nine senior from Ivory Coast. Turner down the lane, the runner drops. Nice little floater by Evan Turner. Basketball gods put that one in for Bowling Green. But Simmons is getting challenged on the outside. O'Reilly gives it up. Frederick trying to take it to the basket. He goes off glass. Noah Frederick, another guy that can shoot it from long range and attack the basket as you see Dylan Fry do right there to get it right back to a one possession game. And that's exactly what Bowling Green wants to do. They want to get out on these transitions and take advantage of Evansville. Good hustle by Dylan Fry to get back and get the quick point for BG. Drew Smith trying to put it on the deck. Frederick left but couldn't finish. It's like Frederick a little bit slow to get up, asking for a sub. Five on four, Caldwell three, nowhere close. But Coke on the backside there to clean it up. Evansville off to a solid start at the offensive end so far in this ball game. They lead Bowling Green by three. Drew Smith finding Blake Simmons from three. And then Bowling Green with Justin Turner gets it to drop. Evansville nine, Bowling Green six, with just over four minutes gone by here in the first half. Brad Wozniki, Andrew Everhart back with you. Falcons coming into this game with three straight wins here at the Stroh Center. As Derek Coke continues to knock him down from the line, he's now 24 of 30 from the charity stripe this season. Second free throw is up and good. Now Daquan Plowden, the freshman, going to make his first appearance. Plowden ranked as the 20th best player in the state of Pennsylvania by ESPN this year. One of the four three-star recruits for Michael Huger, his best recruiting class ever. And Plowden was the first to recruit mm -hmm. in this class. Excuse me, first to accept. Mm -hmm. Caldwell looking inside. Wiggins draws a double team, finds Plowden. Nice look there by the big man. Great cut by Plowden. Bowling Green in front by one. Five minutes gone by here in the first half. Good look inside, great hands. No good underneath, and ripping the basketball away. We have a tie-up. Traore knows he should have made that one the first time. And that was the second time that Evansville's had one of those little bunny shots, and they've just failed to get it. The first time it was Noah Frederick, the freshman. With how much Evansville relies on the three-point shooting, you just have to finish the high percentage looks underneath. Yeah, you can't afford to miss those shots, especially when you're relying so much on the three-point ball. And an offensive foul. Justin Turner picks up his first as Nelly Cummings and Matt Fox will check in for Bowling Green. You look at Evansville's last game. It was a dominant performance against Oakland City. 98-56 was the final. They were led in that game by Simmons with 17 points. Gibson also in double figures with 14. And then Frederick King and Hill each had 12. Purple Aces were 11 of 18 from long range. And they scored 46 points in the paint. Speaking of points in the paint, there's two for Drew Smith. Drew Smith, the player we talked about in the open. He just has to continue to attack. Whether he's scoring or not, if he can draw some contact, he's shooting better than 80% from the charity strike. 
Wiggins fighting hard for position. He was tangled up. Evansville basketball. Good job by Dalen Traore of boxing him out and not letting him get to that ball. There's not a ton of size on this Evansville team, but Traore at six foot nine, 230, will present a problem for most opponents. He and Danius Hakenicus, both six foot nine. Some nice big men for this Evansville team. Simmons, the pump fake, and Plowden up in the air. Will be whistled for the foul. And a good sign for Evansville as Noah Frederking checks back in. Went to the bench limping a few moments ago after attacking the basket. Gibson guarded by Cummings. Ten on the shot clock. Marty Hill, tough shot. Somehow comes up with it underneath. And it will be Bowling Green basketball. Evansville really going hard to the glass. Yeah, they're going hard to the glass, but unfortunately, like you mentioned, they're relying on the three point so much when they go to the glass, they're just unable to make it. Jeffrey Uju checks in. Uju playing just over eight minutes a game off the bench for Michael Huger. Matt Fox left open. Evansville fortunate there. Fox coming off four threes against Norfolk State. We've got a whistle. Bowling Green wanted a double dribble call. The referee saying it was an inadvertent whistle. And now checking in for the first time this season for Bowling Green is Antoine Lillard. Lillard missed the first eight games of the season because of a team violation in the off season. He can shoot it from outside, he can attack the basket. Gives Michael Huger good length at the guard position as Simmons knocks down his second three. Simmons an exceptionally well shooter from three-point range. Shooting 49%. One of many players on this Evansville team that can get it done from behind the line. Evansville now with four team fouls. Gibson just picked up his second, so he will go to the bench. An interesting lineup out there on the floor for Michael Huger right now. Wait and see who's going to take the lead at the offensive end. Nelly Cummings trying to. Three was halfway down, and Uju the offensive rebound. Uju couldn't quite get up to it, but he kind of passed it to himself, made it a little bit easier. Now he'll try the three. Short on that attempt and rebounded by Smith. Jeffrey Uju definitely not one of the players that you want shooting the ball from outside, but he was wide open. Freder King, no good with the right hand. Now here's Lillard in transition. Trying to take this one all the way himself, and he's going to be bailed out by a blocking call. Evansville in front, 14-10. Simmons continuing to fire from long range. That was his second of the game. And DiMaggio Wiggins finding Daquan Plowden on the cut. Star Wars night continues here at the Stroh Center. We're only about 10 days away from the latest Star Wars movie. 
I know our producer Joe Goodman is ready for that. As Antoine Lillard will step to the line. Lillard, a 6'5 junior from Cleveland, Ohio. One of the more senior players on this team. And there is Antoine Lillard's first point of the season. Last year he averaged just under eight points a game and better than four rebounds a game. He was a 67% free throw shooter last year. He goes one for two there. Evansville coming off a 16 and 17 season. Picked to finish ninth in the Missouri Valley Conference and got to find that man, Blake Simmons, with his third three. Yeah, Blake Simmons, one of the biggest contributors for Evansville this season. He missed last season because of injury, but the year before that as a junior, he started all 34 games. As Antoine Lillard attacks. Here's Hill, thought about the three. And an offensive foul called against Simmons. That's his second. So now you've got Simmons with two and Gibson with two. And checking in is Evan Kuhlman. And back in for Bowling Green is Derek Koch. So far this game has been just like what we've seen throughout the years between these two teams. Tight ball game throughout. Comes down to the final minute of play only once in the four previous meetings as a team in this game come out on top by double figures. Drew Smith all the way. Antoine Lillard never gave up on that one. Six point lead for the Purple Aces. Halfway through this first half. Cummings. Coke for three. And Bowling Green still trying to find the range. The foul goes against Jeffrey Uju. Falcons 0 of 5 from beyond the arc right now as Justin Turner, Rod Caldwell, and Dylan Fry return. Dylan Fry, definitely a player that Bowling Green's going to want to get the ball to, seeing that they are 0 of 5 from range. He's a player that can get them back into the game. And then also you add in the play of Caldwell and the way he shot the basketball over the Thanksgiving holiday when he went, what, 14 of 25 from long range himself? Caldwell and Fry, two very skilled sophomores for this Bowling Green team. Evansville comes up empty at the offensive end. Now it's Caldwell back to Fry. He'll dial it up from long distance, and it's good. And just what the doctor ordered for Bowling Green. Roderick Caldwell knew that Dylan Fry was going to be open behind him. Good awareness for him, just getting it to him. And like I said in the open, when Fry is open by that much, he's almost automatic from three-point range. It's exciting for head coach Michael Huger to have that backcourt combination playing as well as they are. And especially as young as they are. Right. Both sophomores. Now Frederick in the paint, blocked. Fry and Coke got a hand in there. And Frederick has not fared well whenever he's gone to the paint in this game. Now Fry has to attack and he finishes with the left hand. One point game. Dylan Fry now three of three. Timeout Evansville. Marty Simmons not happy. 8.15 remaining and it will be an official's timeout. Purple Aces by one, one more look. Dylan Fry from deep. Hey. 
Just over eight minutes remaining in the first half and Evansville still in front. Just a one point game and the Purple Aces have the basketball. Smith, a little hesitation and finish. Drew Smith up to six points in this ball game. He's still perfect from the field, three for three. Turner off the screen, finds Fry left open. Can't ask for a better look than that. Uh, uncharacteristic miss for Dylan Fry. That's his first missed shot of the game. And at the other end, driving hard to the basket was K.J. Riley. Derek Koch took a shot. But it will be Riley to the line for two free throws. Riley, a 75% free throw shooter for this Evansville team. Played last season at Howard College in Texas. Averaged 7.9 points a game and four and a half rebounds a game. Daquan Plowden back on the floor for Bowling Green. Riley, good on the second. Five-point game. And you mentioned how close these games have been in the past. That's really going to pay off in the end if you've got good free throw shooting. Turner off the iron. Wiggins the offensive board. Finds Plowden down the middle. Plowden with the tomahawk dunk. Nobody was going to get in the way of Daquan Plowden for that. Riley. Double team. Three pointer, yes. Marty Hill knocking it down. Continue to see Evansville, no matter. Any kind of big basket that Bowling Green gets, whether it's from long range or inside, Evansville is not intimidated. Mm -mm. They just go right back to work at the offensive end. And a jump ball, possession arrow to the Purple Aces. Evansville's been sticking to their game plan, and obviously throughout what we've seen so far, that game plan has been three-point shooting. They're perfect 4-4 four four right now as opposed to Bowling Green shooting a measly one of seven. He said coming in, Evansville third in the nation in three-point shooting percentage, 47% a game. Evansville with their first miss from three. As Caldwell goes to the rim. And one! Rod Caldwell. Last week he was the Mac East Player of the Week. It was a well-deserved honor. And he continues to distribute the basketball for Bowling Green as well. He's had at least four assists in six straight games. Caldwell, a player much like Smith that we mentioned in the open. He's getting it done on offense. Almost 14 points per game and 4.3 assists. So he's a good scorer and he can dish it out to his teammates. One possession game. Right into the double team. Riley, the up and under. And a foul called against Treori. Great box out there by Bowling Green as a team. And Turner to the line. Justin Turner was four of seven from long range against Norfolk State. Six of the nine games this season for Bowling Green, he has scored in double figures. When you go back to how he started this season, mm -hmm. the 33 points against Drexel, that was a freshman record. 
And it's really hard to come back in the next game and top that. But he's he's really been solid throughout the season as we've seen him make his free throws there. Kuhlman finds Hill. And Smith has to go in the backcourt and save that one. Riley. Smith. Shot clock winding down. In the paint and able to finish. Bowling Green great for 29 seconds of that possession defensively. And basketball is a sport where you can't take any seconds off. You have to play total defense the whole time you're out there. And with one second left on that shot clock, that basket looked a little bit too easy for Evansville. Caldwell no good. And DiMaggio Wiggins battling underneath draws foul on Evansville. So Wiggins will step to the line, an area where he has improved throughout his career. Comes into this game shooting 72% from the free throw line. Wiggins averaging 15 points per game, one of the main contributors on offense. And no problem on the first. Scored in double figures in seven of the nine games this season. And one for two. Bowling Green now seven of nine at the free throw line as a team and Drew Smith taking that one himself. Evansville caught BG sleeping in transition. And Bowling Green returns the favor. No one guarding Justin Turner. Justin Turner doing a good job of answering back after giving up that easy basket. Trying to split the defense. They foul on the floor. That will be number six for Bowling Green. Think of your Evansville, you like the way this game has gone overall so far because of the limited scoring. You, the Falcons come in averaging 85 points a game. Evansville at 69 points a game, but Purple Ace is giving up just 60 points on the season. Yeah, and that's one of the things that they're gonna have to work on is their offense. As you see right there, Kuhlman draining another three. Their offense is doing pretty well today but they've really relied on their defense this season to keep them in games. And Fry blocked but a foul. Dylan Fry to the line. Fry not a player that you want to foul on there. 80% free throw shooter this season. And the first one off the front of the iron and it drops in. Not the prettiest of baskets, but Dylan Fry will take it. He'll take it, the shooter's touch. Yeah, it's not, it's not a swish like he usually makes from behind the three point line, but see what he can do here. And there's the swish you were looking for. Yep. Two point game, just over four to play in this first half. Dangerous pass and Fry a little bit late trying to get a hand in there. First personal on Dylan Fry. Bowling Green a little bit too aggressive with the press right there. As Evan Kuhlman will go to the line. Kuhlman so far, nice job off the bench. Four points. He is one of eight Evansville players to score. There's the balance we were looking for. Mm -hmm. And Kuhlman, not usually a player that scores a lot, only averaging 2.8 points per game this season. Good to see him contributing thus far. Evan Kuhlman did average 16 points a game as a senior, though, at Lakota East High School. Also had 41 threes his senior season. So his role, like the rest of his teammates, going to increase 
Keep an eye on his career. Deep three for Fry and unable to draw iron. Fry definitely did not have the shooter's touch on that. Riley trying to catch Bowling Green sleeping. Another opportunity, Plowden with the block. Dylan Fry. Now Fry baseline, finds Coke. Great dish. Bowling Green continues to stay right there with, with Evansville. Falcons just have to find a way to string some stops together. And that's not going to help. John Hall inside for two more. Final media timeout here in the first half. Rod Caldwell attacking and finishing for an and one. And then Hall, late in the shot clock, got it to go. Three oh three remaining in this first half, and Evansville in front by four. Nice crowd on hand for this Tuesday night non-conference game. John Hall completing the three-point play. If you're just joining us, Bowling Green and Evansville, each with two wins in the all-time series. And Dylan Fry finds Caldwell rimmed out. Bowling Green just not getting those three-point shots to fall tonight. Two of ten from range. And DiMaggio Wiggins checks in for Daquan Plowden. Wiggins so far, 12 minutes of action, three points, and seven rebounds. Inside, no good. Kuhlman the rebound. Inside, getting position. Frederick thought he had an and one there, just couldn't get it to drop, but he will shoot two. Frederick King has just had the worst luck going in the paint tonight. Missed all four of his shots when he gets near the basket. But he does get the benefit of the doubt with the foul. First free throw is up and good. Six of six now at the line for the Purple Aces. Matt Fox returns along with Danius Hatkevikis. Two for two. Evansville in good position here on the road. They've done a good job of keeping the crowd out of it. Not allowing any big Bowling Green runs. Evansville up by seven. But like you mentioned before, every time they get a little bit of a lead, Bowling Green kind of reels them back in. Caldwell up top, short, and Smith the rebound. And Drew Smith all the way. That's not the first time we've seen that tonight. He's now in double figures, the first Evansville player to do that. Wiggins wants it in the post. Contact from behind, no whistle. And Coke in the post, and one. Miscommunication there defensively for Evansville. Derek Coke gets the sixth point of the game. Seven point game, less than 90 seconds to play in the first half. Smith, contact, got it to go. Drew Smith, impressive performance. Stays perfect from the field, now six of six. And Caldwell 
Bowling Green in the double bonus. If you're Bowling Green, you have to find some way to get an answer for Drew Smith because he is absolutely killing them right now. The concern coming in for Bowling Green, you're scoring 85 points a game, yes, but you're also giving up 81 a game. So you're first in the MAC in scoring, mm -hmm. last in the MAC in scoring defense. Yeah, kind of, uh, kind of counterproductive for Bowling Green. They're going to have to find a way to tighten up their defense. Caldwell, no good. And they're also going to have to work on their free throw shooting. Now 9 of 14 from the charity stripe, only 64%. Well, well, and the free throws were strong last game when they went 18 of 21. And it's the small things right now for Bowling Green that are kind of limiting them from playing to their full potential. And Nellie Cummings checks into the game for Rod Caldwell. There have been times this season where Rod Caldwell has done the job offensively and then you've gotten an immediate impact from Cummings as, as well. Nellie Cummings to the basket. It's good. Not quite sure how he got that one to drop, <laughs> but he'll take it. And now Evansville can hold for the final shot here in the first half. Down to 15 seconds. Boy, did Cummings put some uh, English on that ball, getting the sweet spin off the glass. Riley went right into the defense. K.J. Riley will shoot two. He's two for two at the line so far tonight. Evansville looking to keep their streak of free throws alive. Seven for seven right now. And just like last year, Evansville first half shooting 53% from the field. That's gonna get it done on the road against most opponents. Here's Nellie Cummings. Turner, three, yes! Bowling Green needed it. Momentum for the Falcons to head to the locker room as Evansville leads it 46 to 40. Drew Smith, a big first half, 12 points to lead the Purple Aces. Continuing to attack the basket, he's a perfect six for six. Forty-six, forty. your halftime score. Evansville leading Bowling Green. Only lead Bowling Green had in the first half was 10 to nine, very early on in the first 20 minutes of play. Evansville has led by as many as nine in this game. And we look now at some of the first half highlights. Evansville attacking the glass early and often. Yeah, Evansville, they're doing exceptionally well, 53%. And then they're getting it done, like we said, they would have to do at three-point range. A perfect five of five so far. And they're also getting it done behind the charity stripe, nine of nine. They're doing everything they need to do to stay in this game, and they're leading. Tough shot there, got it to go off glass. Evansville has worked deep into the shot clock on several possessions tonight, but still have gotten high-quality looks. Dylan Fry, pretty reverse there. So far on the night, Fry with nine points. And Frederick, again, just adding to the balance that we've seen from the Purple Aces with eight different players scoring. DiMaggio Wiggins, this was great court vision, finding Plowden on the cut. And Drew Smith, you want to talk about vision, he has seen the driving lanes all throughout this game. Yeah, and Drew Smith, it's like he's been throwing a pebble into the ocean so far. He's six of six from the field doing everything he has to do, and he's a great player. That's why we chose to talk about him in the open. Antoine Lillard came off the bench 
Got his first points of the season. And a rare fast break basket. Dylan Fry from deep. That was a rare Bowling Green three-point make. And Fry finishing with the left hand that time. And it's Evansville in front on the road, leading the Falcons by six. Evansville leading Bowling Green 46 to 40 after 20 minutes of play. Brad Wasnicki, Andrew Everhart here with you. And we knew coming in these were two teams that knew how to shoot it from long range, both shooting better than 40% on the season. Blake Simmons, a perfect three of three in that first half. Yeah, Blake Simmons, one of the bigger contributors for this team in the absence of Ryan Taylor. He's got nine, to nine total points so far to go along with Drew Smith's 12. And then you look at Bowling Green, they've had a little bit more trouble shooting the ball, especially in three, but they're being led in scoring by Justin Turner. No surprise there. And then Dylan Fry also adding nine points. One more look, another three-pointer here for the Purple Aces as Kuhlman was able to knock it down. Another look at it. Perfect five for five. From long range for the Purple Aces in the first half. We'll be back here on ESPN. A look at the Anderson Club here at the Stroh Center as Bowling Green and Evansville both back out on the floor and getting ready for the second half here on ESPN. And let's look now at the first half numbers. Evansville shooting better than 50% from the field. Bowling Green at 48%. You're not too unhappy with those numbers if you're both coaches. Coming in now to the second half, Evansville does have the slight advantage on the glass. And then three point shooting, we've set it perfect for Evansville so far. Yeah, I mean, you look, <clears throat> you look at the stats right here, almost mimicking each other. 48%, that's obviously very good for Bowling Green. But the thing that's really made them struggle in this game is their lack of three-point shooting. Only shooting three of 11 right now. And their usual three-point shooter, Dylan Fry, has only hit one in the game so far. So that's really been one of the biggest assets for uh, Evansville. And each team, after 20 minutes of play with... Five turnovers. Bench points, Evansville, the 19 to nine advantage. All right, those are your first half numbers. When we come back, more basketball here on ESPN. Bowling Green turned it over on their first possession of the second half. And it's Evansville with the basketball leading by six. Brad Wasnicki, Andrew Everhart here with you on ESPN. Tuesday night, men's college hoops. As the shot no good and Wiggins rips down the rebound. Two rebounds away from double digits for DiMaggio Wiggins and Derek Koch with Bowling Green's fourth three-pointer. The Falcons now shooting 33% from long range. With the exception of that turnover to start off the second half, Bowling Green's done really well in the short time so far within three points. And like we said before, they just sort of seem to reel themselves back in. Frederick no good. Wiggins another rebound. Fry takes it to the basket. One point game. Fry now the leading scorer with 11 points. They're going to have to get him more involved. And a near turnover for the Purple Aces. Two players so far in double figures scoring for Bowling Green. My partner just mentioned Fry. You have Justin Turner who had 10 points in the first half.
This motion offense, not an easy thing to guard. A lot of long possessions. Got to communicate defensively. And a foul against Bowling Green. Here's Gibson, try to find Smith. Turner got a hand in there. And it will be Bowling Green basketball. That will give us an opportunity to send it over to Caden Albanese. Well, I was able to catch up with both coaching staffs at the half. For Evansville, they need to keep up the three-point shooting, they said, to win this game and slow down the pace and especially stay out of foul trouble so they can't put themselves into a hole. On the BG side, they said they have to play better defense, especially at the second line. They're giving up too many layups and on offense, they're dribbling too much, and they need to find Wiggins, who has nine rebounds, but only three points on the night. Back to you, Brad. Big block by Gibson, and at the other end, that's two more points for Blake Simmons, putting him in double figures with Drew Smith. Two minutes gone by here in the second half. And Fry. Now Coke looking inside. Wiggins fighting for position down there. Turner fading away. I think Evansville will live with that shot. Three on two, Frederick all the way. First points that Frederick's had in the paint all night. And Nelly Cummings to the scores table. Drew Smith the steal. Saw that pass all the way. And that'll be Drew Smith's 13th steal of the season, leading the Evansville team. Just a really good do-it-all player for them. And Gibson trying to dump it inside. Great hands by Dylan Fry. The kick to Caldwell. No good. At Kevakis, the rebound. And Bowling Green's struggles from the three-point line continue in this game. And Caldwell, a near steal. Simmons can't give him too much space. As he puts it on the deck and finds Hat Kevakis for the two-hand flush. Wiggins was really left on an island. Nobody back there to guard the rim as that was an easy layup. And Michael Huger wants to talk things over. It will be an official's timeout. 52-45, your score, Evansville in front. And Dylan Fry. In double figures tonight, attacking the basket here. And Simmons, great look to Hat Kevakis for the slam. <laughs> Bowling Green with the basketball, trailing by seven. See what adjustments the Falcons make out of the timeout, especially at the defensive end, because had a lot of easy high percentage looks for Evansville as Bowling Green gets a high percentage look inside to Derek Koch. Koch now with 11 points, tied with Dylan Fry as the leading scorers. Simmons, another three, no. First three-point miss of the night for the Purple Aces as Cummings out of control is bailed out by the blocking call. For Gibson, that will be his third. He was frustrated by foul trouble in the first half. Another timeout. Just over four minutes gone by here in the second half. We'll be back. From the moment you set foot on campus at BGSU, you'll know this is a place where you can belong. In fact, BGSU is recognized for our strong commitment to engaging students in their education. And Bowling Green is one of the best college towns in America. This is a place where you can stand out. Come to one of the nation's top public universities and choose a program that fits you. 
take advantage of the Falcon Internship Guarantee, the first of its kind in Ohio. With a BGSU degree, you can go far, further than you ever thought possible. Confident in your qualifications and ready like never before to fly. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University. Fifty-two, forty-seven. Your score: Evansville leading Bowling Green. The Purple Aces on the road, trying to pick up what would be their seventh win of the season, and also trying to snap Bowling Green's three-game home winning streak. It's been a really good game so far. This is exactly what we expected from these two teams. Who, whenever they've played in the past, like you mentioned before, it's always been a close game. So, no disappointed people here tonight at the Stro. The seven and two start to the season for Bowling Green is just the third time in the last 16 seasons the Falcons have started with a seven and two record. A big part of the success has been the fact that Bowling Green has been getting the job done on the road. Three and zero oh in true road games this season. Last time the Falcons started three and zero oh in true road games was 2001-2002 season. Bowling Green, an opportunity here to try and get it back to a one possession game. Here's Cummings up top. Now Fry. And Turner a foot out of bounds. He was ready to let that one fly. Yeah, Turner had a good look, but just uncharacteristic error for Bowling Green. Bowling Green now with eight turnovers in this ball game. Simmons. Shot clock winding down. Smith knocks down the three. His first make of the night from long range. Bowling Green has had no answer for Drew Smith. Seven of seven from the field. One of one from three point range. And Smith is now nine of 14 from deep on the season. Too much on that pass for DiMaggio Wiggins. And Drew Smith had an impressive freshman season averaging better than five points and 2.6 rebounds a game. That earned him Missouri Valley Conference All-Freshman Team Honors. That experience definitely helping now that they've lost their leading scorer for a couple of weeks as he's able to step into that role and take more of a leadership role for this Evansville team. And Wiggins just picked up his second. Traore, hard off the iron on the first. And Daquan Plowden checks in for Derek Koch. And that ties the largest lead for Evansville tonight. Fry, step back three, off the iron, long rebound, and Simmons comes away with it. And Riley came up short into the hands of Wiggins. DiMaggio Wiggins now in double figures and rebounding. Turner open, cashes in. Just what Bowling Green needed as they're behind by nine points. Now back to a two possession game. Simmons, a foul on the floor. That will be the third team foul for Bowling Green. As 
Daquan Plowden is the guilty party for that foul. A little bit too aggressive guarding Blake Simmons. Inside, Traore blocked by Plowden. No easy buckets. <laughs> And Turner lost it at the other end. Able to gather, find Wiggins. And the pump fake drew the contact. DiMaggio Wiggins one for two at the free throw line tonight. Bowling Green as a team, nine for 14. Wiggins with only three points, but he's been getting it done on the boards with 11 so far. We well, heard Caden mention on the halftime adjustments from Michael Huger and his staff, they want to get more touches for Wiggins inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wiggins is definitely a solid player that they need to utilize more, averaging 15 points per game. He's got some work to do if he wants to get up to that average. And no good. Evansville by five. Smith, three-pointer, his second. And he stays perfect. Has yet to miss so far. He's eight of eight. <laughs> like I said before, if you're Bowling Green, you got to find a way to guard him. And Cummings can't answer. In the first half, you had to find Simmons. Second half, it's Drew Smith from long range. There's a fight under the basket for the ball. And the possession arrow pointing to Evansville. Evansville still with the advantage on the glass. 24 to 20 right now. It's Matt Fox and Evan Kuhlman check in for their respective teams. Nice move there by Riley to get open. Smith again. Yes, sir. 21 for Drew Smith. And I think it's safe to say that Drew Smith has the shooter's touch in this game. Just cannot miss wherever he is on the floor. And Coleman coming down for help side forces a turnover. We're inside of 12 minutes to play. Evansville by double figures. Good look. And another three. This time it's Frederick. His first three-point make of the night. And Bowling Green calls the timeout. 65-51. Evansville in control on the road. Thanks to that man, Drew Smith. He's got 21 points. Two of two from long range, make that three of three. Evansville so far in this second half has outscored Bowling Green 19 to 11. They're 9 of 10 from deep. And Drew Smith leading the way with 21. Also has three rebounds, three assists. Did we mention he's perfect from the field tonight at 9 of 9? <laughs> and he has definitely helped Evansville on their now 19 to 6 run that they've had over Bowling Green. The 21 points tonight for Drew Smith, a new career high. His previous career high was 19 points last season against Wichita State. Bowling Green with Cummings, Fox, Plowden, Wiggins, and Turner on the floor. 
And Cummings to the basket, able to finish. Cummings, a really shifty point guard for Bowling Green, finds a way to slither his way under the basket and get back two points for BG, who desperately needs some right now. Smith, pump fake, and the finish. Smart move. You're feeling it from long range. You know it. Bowling Green knows it. Take it to the basket. Surprised Smith hasn't missed a shot yet that he would pass up that three, but. And Cummings, a lot of contact. Nellie Cummings will go to the line for the first time tonight. Cummings on the season. Five of six at the line. Gibson back on the floor for Evansville. And Derek Koch for Bowling Green. So now for Evansville, you have Kuhlman, Gibson, at Kevakis, Frederick and Smith out there on the floor. Cummings cashes in on his two free throws. One of the many touted freshmen on this Michael Huger squad. Gibson. Still, still time in the shot clock. Great ball movement by Evansville. Trying to work their way around the zone. Three-pointer, yes. And if you're Bowling Green, there's nothing more you can do about that. Everybody knows where everybody is on the court. They're getting a lot of high percentage shots and they're, just, they're falling down for them. And the answer at the other end for Nellie Cummings. Evansville now 10 of 11 from three-point range. That is just unthinkable. Bowling Green, much the opposite. Six for 17 for 35%. And it drops at Kevakis underneath. Fired up after that one. He's got six points, three of three from the field, and four rebounds. You mentioned before, it's not just one player for Evansville getting it done. Smith with 23 points, Simmons with 11, Frederick with nine, and Kuhlman with eight. They're spreading the ball around. And Gibbons, great hustle, trying to beat Coke to that basketball. And Dylan Fry back in, along with Antoine Lillard. With Bowling Green down by as much as they are, usually in these situations, you'd want to look for Dylan Fry to get something started from three. But so far in this game, only one of four has had his share of struggles behind the three-point line. Just over nine minutes remaining, and Nellie Cummings unable to knock that one down. Smith gets it back, three-pointer. His first miss of the night, but Riley, the offensive rebound. And bodies all over the floor. Possession arrow to Bowling Green. And Blake Simmons. Returns for the Purple Aces. The redshirt senior tonight, 11 points on four of five shooting. Also has three assists and two rebounds. He's been getting it done on the, both the offensive side and defensive side. And overall for Evansville, it's just been a great team game. Turner blocked by Smith. 
A lot of one-on-one -on -one play for Bowling Green right now, and that's not going to get it done. Frederking. Inside, Smith. Media timeout. 74-58 your score. The Purple Aces in front by 16. Good ball movement continues. High percentage looks. Three-pointer there for Kuhlman. Evansville in front. Great ball movement continues for Evansville. High percentage looks like that one there for Drew Smith. 25 points to add to his career high. Bowling Green out of the timeout. Fry gives it up to Turner. Tries to split the defense, the left hand, that was pretty. Very impressive for Justin Turner, splitting those two players, finding a way to get it up and, up and in. Turner up to 15 points as Bowling Green commits a foul at the other end. Michael Huger not happy with the call. That will be Bowling Green's fourth team foul. A lot of things that head coach Michael Huger uh, cannot be very happy with tonight, especially Bowling Green's three-point shooting. They continue to struggle. I think the best way to describe it is frustrating. Gibson double teamed. Good look at Kevakis, another two-hand slam. Evansville is doing whatever they want right now at the offensive end. And they're not trying, it doesn't look like they're trying extremely hard. They're getting those wide open shots. Turner, corner three. Good. And Turner now 4 of 4 from deep tonight. Gibson guarded by Caldwell. Gibson in the paint. Time was winding down. Evansville shot better than 50% in the first half. They're shooting 65% so far in the second half. And a lot of that comes from their ball movement that they've been having so far. Always seeming to find the open man. Never really having to struggle for a tough shot, and that'll really go a long way. Bowling Green foul. Matt Fox and Noah Frederking into the game. Also into the game is John Hall. Smith, the kick, and the shot is good. That's Frederick King. He's now in double figures with 11. Third Evansville player to reach double figures. As Lillard at the other end couldn't get it to go, but he will shoot two. One of the things that's working in Evansville's favor is the fact that not only Drew Smith has 25 points, but because of that, it's really forcing a lot of Bowling Green players to hone in on him, and it's letting some other uh, Evansville players get open, such as Noah Frederking right there for the easy three-point shot. Yeah, just to add to your point, Bowling Green trying to make adjustments, take certain things away, but Evansville has just been too good at finding that open option. Mm-hmm. 
It all goes back to that court awareness. As mentioned before, they're excellent passing. And when you've got two players on Drew Smith, he's got such great awareness where he is going to find someone that's open. Simmons. Just over five minutes remaining. Frederick takes it to the basket. Fry taking matters into his own hands. He'll go to the line. That's all you can do right now, just attack. Mm -hmm. Try and get to the free throw line, work your way back into this game without time coming off the clock. For Bowling Green tonight, it's not like they've played bad defense. It's just that Evansville has been shooting out of their mind. A team that has really struggled this season on offense. Really uncharacteristic of them to be shooting right now 59% from the field, 80, 85% from three. And it's really hard to win if you're Bowling Green when Evansville's putting up those kind of numbers. Dylan Fry missed the first. Second one, no good. And that right there kind of solidifies Bowling Green's night. Unable to do the simple things, and it's really hurt them in this game. They are down by 18. And off the hand of Simmons. Riley just couldn't quite connect with the big man down low. Now Cummings to the basket, short. And then Turner able to take it right back. Cummings to the basket and back to the line. Thank Justin Turner for his spectacular defense right there. Jumping that pass and that's about the third time that he's made a defensive play like that tonight. You look at the Missouri Valley Conference and the preseason poll. Evansville picked to finish ninth in the conference. Missouri State, the favorite to win the league. Northern Iowa in at number two. As Cummings knocks down the first. Evansville so far not playing like a team that would be expected to finish ninth. And I don't think a lot of people would have expected them to be playing this well without Ryan Taylor, their leading scorer. But they've had players step up in this game so far. And it's really went a long way. Full court pressure here from the Falcons. Smith, great bounce pass. Easy two for Gibson. Fry, three-pointer, short. Gibson the board. Fry now one of five from three-point range. He's a player that you have to count on. And so far he's not been able to get it done in this game. And Cummings takes it away, then gets the timeout. 3.52 remaining, Evansville in front by 18. Frederick to the basket for the layup. And then Smith to Gibson, another layup for the Purple Aces. Good look there at Bill Frack Court. Bowling Green with the basketball, trailing by 18 here on their home floor. And Antoine Lillard again couldn't get the shot to go, but he will shoot two. Lillard tonight, five points. One of one from the field, three of four from the charity stripe. We mentioned where Evansville is predicted to finish in the Missouri Valley Conference. For Bowling Green in the Mid-American Conference, Falcons picked fifth in the MAC East. 
Buffalo the favorite to win the MAC East. Look at the MAC West. Western Michigan the favorite ahead of Ball State and Toledo. Second free throw for Lillard is good. Evansville trying to defeat Bowling Green for the second consecutive season and take the all-time series lead, 3-2. to two. Smith lets it fly. Why not? Just his second miss of the night. As coming spins and finishes. And that's about the second very impressive layup that we've seen Nellie Cummings make tonight. Not sure how he made that, but they're going to need a lot more of those. And Evansville breaks the pressure. And then Dylan Fry able to slap it away. And Simmons will check in. See the turnover numbers on the night. Evansville 11, Bowling Green 10. And the rebounds, Evansville has added to their halftime advantage. Simmons to the basket with the left hand. He's up to 13 points on the night. Too easy for Blake Simmons. Bowling Green has really struggled on defense in this game. And an and one for Dylan Fry. <laughs> Bowling Green one, one point away from tying their season high of points given up to an opponent. Outside of the Lake Erie game. Mm -hmm. When that game went to overtime, 109-106 was the final. Evansville has shot 68% from the field in the second half. As Gibson had it poked away. Shot clock winding down. Simmons got it to go. For Bowling Green. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, they're doing everything right, but yeah. Evansville just comes out on top and gets it to fall. Evansville is 7 of 10 from deep in the second half. 12 for 15 for the game. As the Purple Aces turn it over, Turner for three. 14 point game, 90 seconds remaining. Bowling Green, you have to foul now. It's crunch time for them. Bowling Green now with five team fouls. Blake Simmons goes to the line with 16 points so far. And checking in for Bowling Green, DeAndre Austin making his first appearance, the junior from Warrensville Heights, Ohio. And he is also joined by Ethan Good, the sophomore from Wapakoneta, Ohio. Gibson just going to try and take some time off the clock. And why not? And Plowden got a hand on it. But Bowling Green couldn't gain possession. And now an Evansville turnover, 107 remaining. <laughs> K. 
KJ Riley checks in. Cummings will let this roll until the last second. Off the iron, long rebound, and a collision between Cummings and Gibson. Both players look to be okay. Now it's just keep away for Evansville as the foul is committed. Evansville has only shot two free throws in this second half. They're 10 of 11 for the game. Gibson will go to the line with a not too impressive 46% uh, free throw percentage. Rattles home the first. Dwayne Gibson played just four games his junior season due to injury. He is a very capable scorer. He had a career high 27 points against Southern Illinois. He goes one for two there. Here's good to Fox. No good, and the rebound for Smith. Less than 30 seconds. Evansville led by just six at halftime. Their largest lead in this game was 18 at one point. And they flat out came out and shot the basketball very well tonight. At the end of the day, Evansville just did everything they needed to do to win tonight. There was no area that they really struggled in at all. And it really came through for them as they get their second win in a row against Bowling Green. 91-76 the final. Evansville gets the road victory for their seventh win of the season. And we'll be back to wrap this one up here on ESPN. Welcome back one final time to the Stroh Center here in Bowling Green, Ohio as the Evansville Purple Aces get the road victory by a final score of 91 to 76. Evansville has now won back-to-back -back games in this series. Their seventh win of the season, Bowling Green will drop to seven and three. And looking at the final numbers in this one, Evansville as a team shoots 60%. They were 12 of 15 from long range. They hold the advantage on points in the paint. We said this I feel like a lot of times tonight on the broadcast, Purple Aces got what they wanted at the offensive end. Yeah, and their offense really did get it done for them tonight, and it's really surprising because they've struggled on offense this season and against a Bowling Green team that has a pretty good defense. I mean, whenever you look at what the Purple Aces were able to do tonight, it seems like they almost did everything perfectly, and they did what they needed to do to get a win here at the Stroh. And for Bowling Green, you look at this game and you come out you shoot 47% from the field. Most nights, that's pretty good. The mm -hmm. Falcons only had 10 turnovers, and they also had four players score in double figures tonight. They just could not get stops. And this is one of those special exceptions where the other team just flat out outplays you in every single category. Definitely think that Evansville was going to do this good coming into the game. But you know what? That's why they play the game. That's why they don't leave it up to the paper. Evansville came out and did what they needed to do to get a win. And let's look ahead now for these two teams as Evansville now will return home for a game against Canisius on December 9th. Another home game against Austin P, and then they'll play Midway on December 17th. You see that game on December 20th on ESPN2 at Duke, at Cameron Indoor Stadium. That's going to be a great opportunity for this team. Yeah, uh, that, that's an honor for any team to play against Duke at Cameron Indoor Stadium. You know what, Brad? I think I'm going to watch that game, uh, see how the Purple Aces do. They got it done versus Bowling Green. It'll be interesting to see how they do against the Blue Devils. Yeah, we saw South Dakota come in here earlier this season, and South Dakota also 
had an opportunity to play against Duke. Duke, the number one team in the country, did get the victory. Now looking ahead for the Bowling Green Falcons and Falcons on the road for the next two at Old Dominion and at Green Bay. Then home on December 28th for a non-Division I game against Lords. Then it's Mid-American Conference play against Miami of Ohio on January 2nd right here on ESPN3. Then on the road at Eastern Michigan for the first MAC road game. So as we look back on this game now, we came in talking about Drew Smith for Evansville. And what more can you say about Smith tonight? He missed just two shots. He had a career high, 25 points, did a little bit of everything. Yeah, like we mentioned, he's just a great overall player, and he really had no weaknesses tonight. Shot very well. I believe he only missed two or three shots, and when you play like that, play lights out, it's going to be hard for Bowling Green to beat you. And Evansville, I don't know, they, they really got it done tonight. Yeah, Evansville, a great team effort tonight. We said coming in, they were going to be without their leading scorer, Ryan Taylor, for the third straight game. They came into this game off a big victory over Oakland City when they won by 42, so we knew the confidence would be high, and Evansville gave Bowling Green everything they could handle tonight. Final thoughts on Bowling Green now going forward. I think for Bowling Green, this is just a special exception where the other team just plays completely out of their mind. They have to have a short memory and get regrouped for the next game. Yep. Evansville shot better than 53% from the field in the first half. They shoot better than 60% from the field in the second half. And that will do it for tonight's broadcast. Once again, your final score in this one, 91-76. to The Evansville Purple Aces get the victory. For my broadcast partner, Andrew Everhart and our sideline reporter, Caden Albanese. I'm Brad Wozniki saying so long from the Stroh Center. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.